everybody, this is Darwin Reynan, the Festival Director of Hospitalejo Vega International Film Festival. I'm happy to have today uh, Alex. Alex has made a great film, actually, and it's a, very, it's a film that really, really uh, gets my mind because I'm also trying to figure out the situation of how we die, why we die. And these questions that everybody's asking, probably nobody is asking like, publicly but everybody's asking that mentally for sure so i'm very intrigued by your film alice congratulations how are you today i'm really good darwin thank you very much for asking yeah i'm so, fine thank you yeah uh, we i'm i mean i'm happy i really enjoy your film uh, it brings a lot of questions that i always been asking uh, yeah. my first question uh, alex is why do you write this film what was the intention what was the drive mm. that made you mm. well well that's a probably a long and interesting story um i mean firstly i didn't write it um i i had an idea that i wanted to explore the topic of death in some way i i, I think it started possibly many years ago i had this notion that maybe there was a link between happiness and the way that um, a particular culture uh, treated death. Mm. Um, and initially, I had wanted to make a, a, a fairly traditional documentary, just a sort of ethnographic study, if you like, about cultures and the way that they um, approach death. And, and, and also whether that might have a, uh, there might be a link to sort of overall happiness and contentedness with, with a society. Right, uh, Alex, very good, uh, interesting. Uh, let me ask you, because I was very also impressed by the footage, all this footage that you have in the, in the film. How, yeah. was, how easy or how difficult was to organize and decide, okay, now I want this here, now I want this here. How was the process for you? Because that seems very difficult, right? Yeah, yeah. That footage is beautiful footage that you have there. How was Thank that you. process? Okay, so um, firstly, I should say I I am a, an editor. Um, so for my, for my for my for my work, for my bread and butter, if you like, yeah. that's what I do. So so as you can imagine, the the film is quite post heavy, um, oh, yeah. and and you know. Um, I worked with a, a, a friend of mine, a very talented photographer and cinematographer called Phil Fisk. Um, and so the idea was that we would film, I, I really, I didn't know what I wanted to film initially. Um, I, I'll be honest with you, initially I, I, I toyed with the idea of trying to work with people that were at the end of their life um and try and record that process i thought that was the only honest way to really get into this subject um as you can imagine that process is incredibly challenging um on a number of levels and in fact just when i finished my film um which obviously didn't go that way um i saw a film called end of life which is a brilliant film and the directors, two directors who happened to join forces, they were both on this journey together to, 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 to make a film about death, but they met, they were brought together by someone, so they joined forces. And they spent four years um, training as uh, doulas. Do you know what a doula is? No, really. They, okay, D doulas are normally found in uh, birth, uh, in, at, at, at birth, at birthing. Um, so they, they, they operate a little bit like a midwife. Um, so they're not, um, medically, I mean, to some extent they're medically trained, but they're not medic medical professionals, mm -hmm. but what they offer is a sort of, um, emotional, spiritual support mm -hmm. at the, at the birth, um, a little bit different to a midwife. So they can be there mm -hmm. and become friends with the mother through the process. So they don't just turn up at the birth mm -hmm. itself as far as i understand and there are end of life doulas who are there to hold your hand as you go through the process of, of death if you are in that sort of 
process of, of long term process of, of death if you're dying in a hospice or a hospital so these filmmakers and forgive me i've forgotten their names i should have written it down for you but they trained as doulas for four years um in order to uh to be um uh, with these people as, as as in their in their last days um and it's a it's an incredibly powerful film um brilliantly made it has its own uh i suppose failings in some sense as as anybody tackling this subject would have i mean i certainly feel that you know how we die is you know it, it fails in many ways mm -hmm. um so i guess what i'm saying was i didn't know quite how to approach the subject so i didn't know what to film after i decided that that i didn't want to do that that actually no one can express what it feels like to die uh, no one i don't know anybody that's come back from the dead do you so it's it, it's kind of impossible so yes you can observe it and you might observe somebody dying and that has an incredible poetry to it and if you, if you watch this film it's incredibly moving it's very poetic um and one of the drawbacks i mentioned is i i asked them afterwards i went to a screening at the ica and i and i thought that they'd taken out quite a lot of the pain and suffering of some of the people that they had filmed and they said they had intentionally mm -hmm. which was interesting so they intentionally made something that felt poetic and 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 almost untroubled um and quite often that isn't the case when people die how was the i know this is very personal for you it seems like a yeah do you do you, when you have the final cut? Do you show it to people to get feedback, or you went with your own guts and say, "No, I like what I have here." How was well, that? Because you had to explain that. In yeah. A quick, um... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So two. So two things. I, I was making it as part of this masters, so I was there were there were I, I made it in sections, uh, and the film kind of has different sections, so that was okay. in some way natural. So yes, I was showing it to um, professionals and I was getting professional feedback from documentary filmmakers, from professional editors, from the, and so I really thought long and hard about when I got feedback that I didn't like. <laughs> <laughs> because these guys are professional and, right. and they know what they're talking about. It isn't just subjective. It's not just, well, I like that and, that, and that's cool or that you would get from friends or family. Um, so yes, I took a lot of, the feedback from that on board as i think i mentioned with the um having people in it which i didn't have in initially when i had the finished film i felt a lot harder this is the first feature film i've ever made um i was quite shy to show people uh initially um obviously i did i did present it as as part of as my master's finished uh film if you like my finished um asset to the inquiry um i can't really answer that question this is the first time i've done it so there was a little bit of both but i would say on the whole i'm i was quite shy um because i'm i feel like i'm easily swayed in some ways and i didn't want to be easily swayed and think oh yes i need to change that right. and then come, my experience as an editor is quite often i'll change something come back a few days later and think yeah that was the right thing to do but also sometimes come back what, what was i thinking um so the one thing i did have on my side was time working on my own i could give myself time so i could do things leave it for a week come back see how that sat with me so i i think i have been quite shy i haven't shown it to a lot of people um it hasn't you know so that i did i did like how it came up i also knew the limitations that i had that i couldn't do certain things um uh, if that makes sense so it was like well even if people say try this or do this it's like, well, i'm not sure plus it'd been with me for a long time and i think at some point you have to move on mm -hmm. and, and try other projects um wonderful yeah right, so my last I question is uh, we're going to death what do you think the western people nowadays is not thinking about death as they so before? it's because we live in very good let's call it like that especially yeah or i think what, so what, I, what do you think yeah i think i think one of one of um i think mandy said it i think that 
um, in the film, uh, she says that it's been medicalized. Yeah. So what we have, what we have, we, we, we rely on doctors to fix us so much. Um, so even in, even in death, we, we, it's very natural that you want to look after your loved ones and, and live longer. But at the same time, doctors uh, are, are not trained in how to uh, talk about death or how to let people know that actually someone is, is dying and that's what I can do. They, they have to try and fix somebody. That's what they live to do. And so once we shift death from a natural part of life into a medical issue, it then becomes something we can fix. And of course we want to live forever. Everyone seems to want to live forever. Um, and I think that actually what I've learned is that if anything, death really gives value to life, mm -hmm. not just in a sort of narcissistic, let's live for today in a selfish way, but actually, you know, if I was to never see you again, because I could walk away from here and die, crossing the road what would be what would be the last thing or the last impression you had of me and and would that count and why wouldn't i live every moment and every interaction i have in my life in that way because it could be and if we start thinking like that rather than oh i'm just gonna get fixed by a doctor or maybe i can take a pill and live forever or maybe i can freeze myself and come back then perhaps we could start being a lot uh, you know, we could listen more to others. Mm -hmm. um, we could be more um, tolerant of other people. We could look after one another more. We would look after the world we live in more because there will be people coming after us that want to enjoy it rather than more, more, more. I need to get in as much as I can. Capitalism has a role to play here as well. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of politics that started to come into this as well, interestingly, that I never thought... <laughs> You know, um, and that there's that little sort of montage at the beginning, which I wanted to sort of play with these ideas. Um, you know, if, if, our, if our focus is, is on as much as we can get and on self-interest, not just self-reliance, then these are kind of perspectives that we have. And perhaps if we shift, shift the conversation back and talk about the f death, you know, it's a great leveller doesn't matter how much money you have or uh -huh. what a car you drive or, you know, at the, at the end of the day, what is going to be your last thought when you slip this mortal coil? Well, what regrets are you going to have? Um, it's certainly not going to be, I wish I worked more or I, or I had a bigger house because that's not what people who work in death say. They say that people genuinely wish they'd spent more time with their families they wish they'd made more time for their friends. They wish they'd lived their dreams. You know, they wish they hadn't been so scared. That's not so easy in a world which is bombarding us with fear. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Alex, it's been a pleasure. Everybody has to come in and watch this film in Barcelona. How we die is really interesting. It's really touching the core of every human being. All the people who doesn't like to ask this question, you can get really clear and very easy answers actually i like that from your film you know because it's really to to anybody with any knowledge you know to understand yeah. that is you did yeah. really well there congratulations on your nominations they are really well deserved absolutely thank great you very film. much uh, very, very looking happy. forward to meet you alex in yeah. barcelona let's see right let's see you yes have, uh, absolutely we'll be there i'm sure i'm sure it will happen it's I'm looking forward to it very much it's, it's been a pleasure to to meet you, Alex, and yes, and share with you all the knowledge, especially you know from the filmmaking side, but from the spiritual side, which is really important also for us as a filmmakers, right? Mm. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, Alex, yes, uh, thank you very much, and I'll see you in Barcelona. Thank you very much, Darwin. Much appreciated. Have a lovely day, and yeah, see you in March. Fingers crossed yes. in March. Fingers crossed, right? Thank you. All right, Alex. Thank you. See you. Ciao.